Welcome to Speed Bump Garage. My name is Kent and today we're going to be working on my wife's 2012 Lincoln MKX that has been suffering from the black screen of death. And what I mean by that, the touch screen, the sync system has went completely black. And like many of you that have clicked on this video, I'm sure you've been doing the same thing that I've been doing. I've been pulling that radio fuse out and doing a hard reset on the system. And it's got me by, it worked great until it didn't. About two weeks ago, the screen went black and pulled the fuse, can't get it to reset. I've got nothing, nothing is working. And it turns out it is the APIM module. That is the brain on the back of your touch screen. It's also referred to as the accessory, accessory protocol interface module, APIM. I found a replacement APIM from a company online called 40 Tech and you give them your VIN number and they give you your new APIM program to your vehicle. This is not a sponsored video. I found them, they had great reviews and it worked. Now, this is an extremely easy install that I put off for way too long. You're only gonna need two tools. You need a ratchet with a seven millimeter socket or a nut driver and a Phillips head screwdriver, that's it. And a little bit of patience because getting the trim pieces off, it takes a little bit of finesse. So you gotta be careful with it. Now I want to tell you before we get into the video, if you don't watch all the way through, you get that sync module in there and turn it on and your touch screen's acting all wacky, don't panic like I did because it happened to me. I'm going to run you guys through how to recalibrate that screen and get it working just like new. Let's get right into it. I started with pulling the radio fuse just so the unit was powered down. It is fuse 29 on my fuse panel. I use the factory fuse removal tool and popped it right out of there. First thing I did was remove these side trim pieces. They came out fairly easily. They had three tabs, you can see them right there, popped right out and then on reinstall, they popped right back in. There's two seven millimeter headed screws on each side of the upper trim panel that have to be removed. Just grabbed my ratchet and socket for that. Next up, I had to remove the top face plate. This thing is clipped in pretty tight and you also have to slide up on it to get it out from under the lower tabs. Just take, take your time with it. Make sure you don't break any brackets. I also left it plugged in. You see the pigtail there for your air conditioner controls. Four more seven millimeter headed screws here. They gotta be taken out and then we'll get the head unit removed. Now that they're out, we can slide it right out of place. And there is two harnesses plugged into the back of my unit. All right, now on the back of it, only two plugs are on this. It has another hole here that's not used, but looks like you just flip this up to help undo that. And there's a squeeze tab on this little one. Fold that over to help release it. Now we'll take this over to our workbench and get that replaced. Now that I have it on the workbench, I do believe that our touch screen is good and the APIM unit is the only thing that's wrong. And I have a replacement one right here, which I got from a company called 4D Tech. I will drop a link to their website in the description of this. This is not sponsored. They just seemed fair priced and they would program it to your VIN number. So this unit right here should be a direct replacement. Looks like it's just four Phillips head screws to get that out. I'm gonna zip those out of there. We will lock the new one into place. Now I did lay a towel down to prevent scratching our faceplate on the touch screen. Quick comparison between the two, they look pretty much identical. This is the original one. It does have that plug that was not utilized. 
This one does not have that plug. Other than that, they both say Ford Motor Company on them. The new one says made in China. The original Ford equipment says made in Mexico. Both of them say scrap if dropped. The part numbers are different, so hopefully that doesn't cause any issues. Let's snap the new one into place. And hopefully that gets us fixed up. I just noticed it does have two guide pins to help line you up. Go into, into the receiver holes right here, so. Hear that snap, it kind of locked right into place. We'll replace our screws. Now I did mention I got this unit from a company called 4D Tech. I want to mention there is several options out there and probably the cheapest option that I was going to go with, I just didn't have the patience to wait on a good deal, is there's a lot of used units on eBay and you can get the whole unit with the new touch screen and everything. I'm kind of gambling because I don't know for sure that my touch screen is good. I'm pretty sure it's good and hopefully we're going to be plug and play and we'll be right back in business. Another reason I liked the 4D Tech option, my MKX has navigation and they offered a upgraded maps card that I'll be able to install. That's just a the SD card because currently I'm running the 2012 map system. I've never updated it. I think mine says like A3 or A4. This says A13. So that'll get us up to date on our navigation and make that more useful. I think we're ready. Let's go put this guy back in, see what happens. Carefully ease the unit back into the dash, plug your big harness in, don't forget to lock it into place, and you have your other harness that you can plug in. Then reinstall your radio fuse. All right, I ran into an issue. I got it installed. I went ahead and put these four bolts in, but my screen is out of alignment. All the functions are there, but none of them are in the right spot on the touch screen. I thought I was going to have to scrap this video, but I just went on 4D Tech's website where I bought the new uh, computer from, and they had a video for realigning your screen if that was an issue. So hopefully that fixes it. Let's go ahead and get this faceplate put back on, and we'll run through those. I'll show you what it's doing real quick. Everything looks great. Fires up, says Lincoln. But, like, where the home button shows to be down here, it's actually up here. And then where navigation's here, I think it might be down here. Yeah, that's my navigation. So everything's flipped 180 of where it needs to be. Fingers crossed their alignment procedure will fix that. And if so, this is a really easy repair as far as getting that installed. I did get my new navigation card put in the slot down in here. There's just a, you can't really see it, but there's a little SD card slot right there. Here's the one that came out of there. This is an A4. I think that one said A14 maybe. So if we can get it to work correctly, I'll have updated navigation. Before I put this faceplate on, I want to show you these little tabs here. This top section actually goes behind those. So you're gonna have to slide it in like that. Let's see if we can get that put in there. Then we will try their alignment procedure. Hopefully we can get those buttons working correctly. Alright, it says to press the eject and then the seat forward button until it does a speaker walk around test. Okay, now it's not really showing up on there, but it says there's an X. There it goes. It said press the X and follow it around the screen.
New calibration settings have been measured. Press the enter key and accept the new settings. Mm. All right, let's try. Our home screen looks good. Let's check entertainment. That's correct. Back home. Yeah. Don't tell mom I told you this, but we just spent seventy dollars on fireworks. <laughs> That's fine, buddy. All right, now we're home again. We're gonna do climate. Home. Navigation with our new map in there. Wonder if the horn still works. That looks Let's good. Wonder if the horn still And works. phone. Search for sync on your now, device. Now everything looks good. Ones that is found. I wanna um see if the horn still works. <laughs> it works. Let's check our backup camera. Yep, backup camera works. My mom needs a backup camera. For sure. But not my dad, really. Oh, we'll slide these back in. It's as easy as that. Well, that's going to be it. I hope this video was helpful. If it did help you, please hit that like button. And if you want to see what else we're doing here in the shop, hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you on the next video.